What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. A question I get a lot is about cantilever gates. How they work, pros and cons of the cantilever gates, etc. So we found a cantilever gate to talk about. Now, unfortunately, this cantilever gate is right next to a road. So you're going to hear some road noise and I apologize in advance. But that being said, let's talk about cantilever gates. This is Joe Everest, the fence expert. My family has been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is talk about the pros and cons of cantilever gates, and then some key notable aspects of cantilever gates. This is not a complete how-to. This is not every pro and every con in the world about cantilever gates. I'm probably gonna miss something. And when I do, help us out by leaving those in the comments below. Now, when we're talking about the pros of a cantilever gate, the big one is gonna be that it can glide over uneven terrain. So this lot is obviously a gravel lot. It's not perfectly flat, not perfectly level. You know, this is a pretty good example of just how this terrain undulates throughout the entire opening. A typical slide gate or roll gate that has a ground wheel would have problems tracking with this and ultimately be very difficult to operate. The second pro of cantilever gates, they can save a significant amount of room. Now this is a 53 foot opening. So if you were to have traditional swing gates say, you would have to figure out how you're gonna swing those gates and where they're gonna swing into. This particular cantilever gate is in the middle of the lot. So you would have either one 53 foot gate or two gates just sitting in the middle of the lot in your way. You wouldn't be able to use this lot knowing that you're swinging open the gate. The cantilever gate slides along the fence. So as long as you have as much fence as you have a gate, you can slide it right along it and use all of this space. Now the third pro for having a cantilever gate would be you can typically have a larger opening than you could with, say, a swing gate. As I said, this is a 53 foot opening, which isn't unheard of for swing gates, but cantilever gates can go up to 100 feet or more when properly braced and trussed. Now we're talking about the negatives or the cons of having a cantilever gate. The one thing as you can see today, it's not even very windy right now and the gate's not staying too stable. Now they have a wind brace installed on it to try to keep that to a minimum and it's doing well, but there's not a lot of support out at the end of the gate. So as your gate opening gets bigger, the less support that gate has on the outside edge of it. So you're gonna start seeing more wind bracing or using different types of bracing to try to keep this thing stable so that when the two gates meet, they meet at the same point every time. The second negative of having a cantilever gate is gonna be the cost. Now, as you can see, there's significantly more material involved in building a cantilever gate in the bracing and the wind bracing of the gate than say a traditional swing gate or even a slide or roll gate. So the cantilever gates are gonna cost significantly more than a swing gate or a roll gate. Definitely a consideration. The third negative aspect of a cantilever gate kind of relates to one of the positives is that it does slide along the fence. In this instance, it worked. They had enough fence on either side of the opening to slide the cantilever gate into. If this was on a corner or they didn't have as much fence, this gate obviously wouldn't work. It has to have as much fence as the gate is long to roll against. So in a tight situation, a swing gate might be your only option. Now, one of the notable aspects of this cantilever gate is the tail section. So typically the tail section measures at least half the measurement of the opening. For example, if this were a 30 foot opening, say, the tail would be 15 feet. Now that 15 feet is not part of the usable gate. It is simply here to cantilever the rest of the gate. Meaning that the tail section provides the force necessary to keep the leading edge up off the ground. Also, the hardware is going to look a little bit different. So rather than have a leading edge ground wheel and two back edge rail wheels or back wheels that ride along a rail, we've just got four neoprene rollers. Now, like I said, these rollers are neoprene. You can also see some steel variants out there. I like the neoprene with the sealed bearings because they don't require ongoing maintenance. It's a sealed bearing. Now we do recommend annual inspections just to make sure that the bearings look good, that the wheel is on nice and straight, that it doesn't need replaced. But as far as ongoing maintenance with a sealed bearing neoprene roller, virtually maintenance free. The last notable feature of cantilever gates for the purposes of this video is that cantilever gates can be automated quite a bit easier. 
And in fact, as far as sliding gates go, cantilevers are one of the few gates that can be automated. You wouldn't really want to automate a gate that involves ground wheels because you have undulating terrain. But even if you have a totally flat and level terrain, you still have to deal with snow and ice. So a cantilever gate can glide right over most of the ice and the majority of the snow. Whatever snow is still there is going to push out of the way. So now you lucky viewers that are in the southern parts of the states or in the warmer parts of the world, snow might not even be an issue for you. Congratulations. Now on the subject of ice, while this gate can glide over ice, where ice fouls this gate system up, the cantilever gate system is in the rollers. Typically, there's not a lot of space between that top roller and the top of the rail. Typically, half to three quarters of an inch, maybe a full inch, depending on who installed this gate. So depending on how much that clearance is, any ice of more than that clearance is gonna foul up this gate. If it's thin ice, the roller typically chips the ice off and it's not an issue. But if the ice is thick or it's just stubborn, it can very likely bind this gate up. All right, so as I said in the beginning, this is a quick overview on cantilever gates, a brief introduction to them, if you will. I'm sure there's things I've overlooked and I've bypassed. Heck, maybe you've already entered those in the comments below. If you haven't, let us know. Drop in the comments below. What have I forgotten? What have I not talked about? Give us some ideas and we'll talk about it in a future video. Also, if you liked the video, if you found it educational at all, it would mean the world if you gave it a like. It's a free way for you to help support the channel. Also, if you want to see more content, please consider subscribing. As of right now, only 10% of the people that view our videos are actually subscribers. That means there's a 9 out of 10 chance you haven't subscribed yet. Check that button down below. If it's red, be sure to smash it. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, and I'm reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.